Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. And a couple of episodes ago, we discussed Mary's relationship to the serpent, Satan, and how she crushes his head. To sum up the main points from that episode, Genesis 3, 14-15 has God predicting that the offspring of Eve will crush his head. Then, after Mary accepted God's will to allow Jesus to be born through her, Luke 1, 38, the crucifixion of Jesus, the sacrifice to redeem all mankind, happened at Calvary, or Place of the Skull. However, surely the sacrifice that took place at Calvary was a sacrifice by Jesus, wasn't it? Are we putting Mary on the same footing as Jesus? Are we letting her take the credit for something her son did? Well, let's take a look at some Bible passages about crushing the heads of enemies and see what that points to. For your obedience is published in every place. I rejoice therefore in you, but I would have you to be wise in good and simple in evil. And the God of peace crush Satan under your feet speedily. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Romans 16, 19-20 Yes, the words of St. Paul can be confusing, but here it's pretty clear that he's referring to the verse in Genesis and using crush to mean seriously defeat in some way. The wording is not precise, but it is a valid way to express the issue. Here, St. Paul is using the term to describe how God makes use of the willing participation of human beings in his work in order to thwart the devil permanently. Nothing the devil does can undermine the sacrifice of Jesus or prevent God from saving people who love him and obey his will. So obedience to God does indeed crush the will of the devil, and no one could be more obedient to God or more involved in his saving work than Mary was, because without her willing consent, the sacrifice of Jesus couldn't have happened in the way it did. So, does God crush the head of Satan? Yes, God is the cause of all goodness, but he sometimes does good things by working through people, and here he definitely works through Mary in order to accomplish the greatest good. God also works through us to accomplish lesser goods, but while we can say that God can crush Satan through us because of our obedience, we can say that same thing much more fully of Mary. As far as the concept of crushing the head and its relationship to the sound defeat of an enemy, that's all over the Bible, with both women and men crushing or damaging the heads of serious enemies. Here are just a few examples from the Old Testament. In the fourth chapter of Judges, we have another situation where, because of their sins and defiance, God allowed the people of Israel to be oppressed by the king of Chanan and his general Sisara. Then, when they repented, And Sisara said to her, Stand before the door of the tent, and when any shall come and inquire of thee, saying, Is there any man here? Thou shalt say, There is none. So Jehel Haber's wife took a nail of the tent, and taking also a hammer, and going in softly and with silence, she put the nail upon the temples of his head, and striking it with the hammer, drove it through his brain fast into the ground. And so passing from deep sleep to death, he fainted away and died. Judges 4, 20-21 Later on, a man named Abimelech tried to seize power by hiring some guys with money he was given from the temple of Baal and using them to kill his brothers on his path to the throne. Ultimately, though, And Abimelech, coming near the tower, fought stoutly, and approaching to the gate, endeavored to set fire to it. And behold, a certain woman, casting a piece of a millstone from above, dashed it against the head of Abimelech and broke his skull. Judges 9, 52-53 It didn't work out for him. Later, there was an Assyrian general named Holofernes who invaded the Hebrew city of Bethulia to try to force the people there to worship only Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. However, in the end, and Judith was alone in the chamber. But Holofernes lay on his bed, fast asleep, being exceedingly drunk. She went to the pillar that was at his bed's head, and loosed his sword that hung tied upon it. And when she had drawn it out, she took him by the hair of his head, and said, Strengthen me, O Lord God, at this hour. And she struck twice upon his neck, and cut off his head, and took off his canopy from the pillars, and rolled away his headless body. Judith 13, 3-4 and 8b to 10. In all of these encounters, there is a common theme of crushing or damaging the head. 
God, after all, is the Lord of history, and when he has a message he wants to get across, he has ways of doing that through historical events. Of course, men have also been shown prominently damaging heads in the Old Testament, like David killing Goliath by hitting him in the forehead with a stone, but the case of Judith is a special one because of the reaction she gets when she kills this enemy of her people. And Ozias, the prince of the people of Israel, said to her, Blessed art thou, O daughter, by the Lord, the Most High God, above all women upon the earth. Judith, 13.23 Sounds like there's a message in there somewhere. Next time, is Mary the new Eve? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.